Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you did make a way for us. You sent Christ, your only Son, into the world to suffer and die for us. We pray, Lord, that not only would you restore us and renew us, but you would also lead us and guide us. That we might serve you, saying no to the evil one, but trusting always in your promises. Be among us today, Lord. May your spirit be present, that we might hear your word. In your name we pray. Amen. In grace, mercy, and peace be yours this day. From God our Father, and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for this morning's meditation comes to us mainly from our Gospel lesson in Matthew chapter 4, but we will take a little glance at that Old Testament lesson from the book of Genesis as well. I am one of those shoppers where if I go out, I want to have the list. I want to have the list to make sure that I get the right thing. But even if I have this list, which is usually given to me from my wife, if I have this <coughs> list and it seems like it's a little too broad, I will call maybe six or seven times while I'm at the store just to make sure I get the right thing. Do any other guys do that? Maybe get concerned about getting the right thing? You don't even go shopping, do you? <laughs> I mean, you look at it and you see cheese, Colby Jack, cheddar, pepper jack, American, shredded. What brand? Think about bread, white, wheat, white wheat. What kind of brand? I mean, you could, you could go on and on with every single item. And when you look at the, the list, really be perplexing, which is why I call home so often to make sure it's right. Now there's a reason why I do that. Because there was a time early on in our marriage when I didn't stick to the list. I took it with me to the store and I, I thought I was being a savvy shopper. I was getting all the generic brand stuff, right? But come to find out not everything that is generic tastes as good as the actual item. I didn't know that. Um, but, you know, I'm looking through the items. I'm saying, okay, okay. And then she had, on one item, it was a specific item. I think it was a, for a chili recipe we were doing. A specific chili bean. The brand and what was in the, the actual stuff. So I, I found it, and right next to it was the generic one. And I looked at it, I was comparing the ingredients, and I said, this is perfect. There's no way she'll know the difference. <laughs> she knew the difference. And I could tell the difference too. We made the chili, it just it didn't taste right. So I can, I can publicly say, my wife was right. Okay, I can get that out there. Uh, it, it just didn't taste right. I should have stuck to the list. That's important. We're to say as the people of God, we're going to talk about what it means to, to, to actually stick to the list. We have those Ten Commandments, a good summary of all the law that God has given to his people, the list that we are to stick to. But even before uh, the law of Moses, even before the Ten Commandments, Adam and Eve, they had a list. The reality was, they could eat anything they wanted from the garden. Every tree was fair game. There was only one that was off the list. The problem was that Tempter is such a good salesman. You can almost even picture what he was saying as he was talking to Eve. Oh, just check out this tree over here. I know it's what you said you don't want, but just look at it. It's beautiful. It's pleasing. In fact, if you eat of it, it's better than any of the other trees in the garden. You will actually be like God, knowing good and evil. The scriptures say that as they look at this tree, they, they agree that it was pleasing to the eye. Maybe God was, was, was trying to slip something by him. And so what do they do? They, they taste, and now they know. They know nakedness, they know shame, they know sin, and soon they're going to know 
that didn't stick to the lips. Much more harmful than a bad bowl of chili. But its effects would ripple throughout all the time, even in an hour of day. Whereas people of God, we struggle with sin. We are tempted and we fall. We fall and we go for the generic, it seems like, every single time, doesn't it? Well, that's where we're going today as we are headed toward our gospel lesson. But I need to do a little bit of Old Testament review so that we can understand why this gospel lesson is so important and why it's in the place that it, that it is. Uh, so let's talk Old Testament. Let's talk the people of God in the Old Testament who were to walk with God, stay on the list, right, following those commandments. But, but how did they do? Well, we see from the moment that they left Egypt, the moment that they crossed the river, they started to ask God. They started to complain, God, we are hungry. And then they even say, we were better off in Egypt. But God, having his mercy, he sends down the bread from heaven, right? The manna that would fill and satisfy temporarily. Because then they would be tired of that and complain again about food. And then complain again about drink. God, we are thirsty. They actually put the Lord to the test saying things like, God, we were better off without you in Egypt than we are right now. Because there at least we could eat, there we could at least drink, there we would be satisfied. But here, in the middle of the desert, we are without everything. Not even, we have to choose on our feet. Everything is just bad. But God allows them to complain. And in fact, and his words, the, the water came forth from the rocks and poured out so that all of Israel could drink. In the middle of the desert, bread from heaven, water coming out of rocks. You think that they will trust this God at some point in time. But then Moses reminds them in Deuteronomy 6. Getting ready to head back into the land, or head into the land for the first time. Moses tells them, remember. Remember who is with you. Remember how God saved you? He delivered you? He supplied your every need. So when you get into that land, worship Him and Him alone. And so how they do? Well, they actually really failed at uh, feeding on God's Word as being the only bread they needed. They put the Lord their God to the test all the time. And they worship God, but they worship false gods as well. In fact, we probably wouldn't actually have to look at the history of Israel too closely because we know what happens in our lives as well. We know we are tempted. We know we are we fall. We go for the generic. Scriptures say man cannot live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God, every word that comes from the mouth of God, is that our only source? Is that the only place we are eating from? It's tempting, isn't it? I'm sure you all were tempted today when that alarm clock went off to hit the snooze button and stay in bed instead of coming to hear the word of God because your sleep was so important. It's so tempting to leave that Bible on the shelf because it's so boring, as some of the students say in confirmation class. To leave it on the shelf and turn on the television or turn on the radio or the internet and do something that's entertaining for you and to be fed whatever it is that those things have to offer. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Sometimes it seems like a slander is just right there behind you in your ear, doesn't it? Go ahead. Let's see how much grace and mercy God actually has. After all, if He is a merciful God, just keep on sinning. You know who you are in God, so what effect is it actually going to have on you? It doesn't mean anything if you sin, if you fall short. It doesn't mean anything if you stumble. He'll just pick you up again. Just test the grace. Worship the Lord your God and Him only. We like to say this, what we do. We get so tempted 
to worship, well, ourselves. And what it is that we want to do? What it is that we want to say? It's like the tempter again, and it's right there saying, just have a little fun. Don't you get burnt out of being a Christian all the time? I mean, come on, don't the, the, the bad people, the sinners, have all the fun in life anyway? And sometimes we actually believe it. And we don't stick to the list. We eat. And like Adam and Eve, we are not satisfied. But we're left wanting more. See, that's why the gospel lesson is really so important. Israel is supposed to be the children of God. In fact, if you were to read the, the Hebrew Old Testament, it actually would refer to Israel says the sons of Israel to show the relationship that Israel is supposed to have with God. The problem is they do not act like sons. But in Matthew chapter 3, we see Jesus going into the baptismal waters, and we hear the voice of God saying, This is my son. This is my son who I love. With him, with him I am well pleased. And the Spirit is sitting upon Jesus, and now we have our text today, where the Spirit leads Jesus out into the wilderness. So the question is, how is this son going to behave? How is he going to act compared to the sons of Israel? Will he be successful or will he be like every single human who lived on the face of the earth? Come on, turn these rocks into bread. Man cannot live on the bread alone. But every word that comes from the mouth of God. Okay, every word that comes from the mouth of God. But doesn't God's word say that he will not let your foot get crushed against the stone? So why don't you go ahead and just throw yourself off the temple and we'll see how mighty you are. We'll see how much power God has actually given you. But see, Jesus knows the rest of that psalm. The psalm that says God will not allow his foot to be smashed against the stone as he is walking in the ways of the Lord. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. And then finally, fall down and worship me, and I will give you everything, every kingdom that you can see. It just has the same echo, the same refrain as Genesis chapter 3. Go ahead and, and feast, for you will be like God. But see, Jesus wasn't out to be prideful. He wasn't looking for a power room. He came to serve God and God alone. And this is really a great, great scripture verse for us in the first week of the night. This whole season is about repentance. It's about returning back to a God who saved us and loves us. Because what we see here is that God understood our state and the state of all of humanity. We are returning back to a God who sends his son to the earth in the flesh, but for a purpose. He actually allows the Spirit to take Jesus out into the wilderness on purpose. This is God on the offensive. This is God going to where Satan to say the one thing that we could not say, which is no. And that's exactly what Jesus does. He is completely victorious, and he would be throughout his entire life. Every opportune time that Satan would come to him, Jesus would say no. Why? Because he was going to stick to the list. Friends, you and I are on that list. Your name and my name are people needing to be redeemed. And there was nothing that was going to stop Jesus from purchasing you. And that's exactly what he did when he went to the cross, died and rose victorious over the grave. You are his. Now, and forever. Amen. <laughs> and may the peace of God which surpasses all of you today, keep our hearts and minds in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's now